The following game has been rated E for everyone by the ESRB. That means that the content in the game is appropriate for anyone aged 6 and up. And while it does not list any specific restrictions or warnings in regards to this specific game, I do know for a fact that it does involve rockets, explosions, and comedy involving rockets and explosions. That means if you are under the appropriate age for the video game, or you feel that this content is not appropriate for you, then you should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations, I am Outlier and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today is of course my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we are returning back to Kerbal Space Program. Well it's not, actually yes, that is the game that we're going to be playing. What do you mean you want to know why? Well, I've liked playing this game in the past. Uh, I've recently seen other people on the YouTube play this, so I figured I might as well continue on. Yes, that is also true. So anyway, the premise of Kerbal Space Program is that you are in charge of... Well, the International Space Agency for a uh, race of beings known as the Kerbals. Which, for all intents and purposes, are little green men and women. True. So, anyway, while there's a variety of different modes to play, I've been playing in... I think it's the career mode. I can't remember its exact name. It's the one where not only do you have to complete missions to gain funding to build bigger and better rockets, but you also have to perform scientific activities in order to gain science to unlock the parts to build said uh, bigger and better rockets. So it adds an extra layer that I feel some of the other layers are missing. Although running low on the ability to get new science easily does end up usually hampering me later in the uh, gameplay, but uh, we're not at that point yet, so that's an issue for not right now. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, this game is, of course, made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. Okay, so this is the Kerbal Space Center. This is the growing heart and, I guess, soul, or at the very least, the brain of the Kerbal Space Program. This is where we operate everything that goes up into space, at least everything that we send up into space. Lots of other people like throwing things up in space for uh, lack of... I guess anything else to do. If you haven't seen any of the prior episodes, uh, we do have a variety of buildings at our beck and call which do a variety of things. Research and development is where we take the science and uh, basically buy new parts. Uh, this is the screen right here. As you can see, I've unlocked everything uh, three tiers in and uh, need well, 45 science apiece to unlock anything else that's new. So, all fun stuff. 
There is also the tracking station, which sees all and knows all in and around Kerbin. As well as, I think, other planets. You can also fast forward an entire day, since it's nighttime, and may do that eventually. Uh, there is also the administration building, where I can get extra buffs and debuffs that affect the uh, space center as a whole. It's basically where uh, the guys who just basically write the checks and make certain everything balances and uh, we make more money than we lose uh, live and work. Or at least work. I don't know where they live. but It's basically where the higher-ups and uh, the, the corporate people operate out of. And we have the astronaut complex, where the actual people we fling into space on, uh, hopefully not exploding, uh, bombs, uh, live and operate out of. I can hire new people if I want, but, uh, I don't really have much need for the people I have, so. So is that. There's also the space plane hangar and the vehicle assembly bay. Both of these are where I build various rockets and other things. And which are tied uh, to the launch pad and the runway, where said things from respective buildings get launched. Finally, there's also Mission Control, where I pick up missions and basically, uh, essentially test the game. Okay, I was just trying to figure out why it said test heat shield, and I thought it was 1.5 meters over Kerbin. But no, it's the heat shield sized 1.5 meters in flight over Kerbin, uh, where I need to get to an altitude of 40,000 to 49,000 meters, whilst traveling at a speed between 1,520 meters per second to 1,940 meters per second. I don't think I'm going to be doing this one because that's a relatively, but still plausible, uh, distance to get, and uh, at a speed of ridiculously high to even more ridiculously high, I think at the, below this speed is where the uh, air around the spaceship starts turning red. Plus, if you do the math, at over a thousand meters per second, I have over, I would have less than nine seconds to actually complete the test before I exceed the threshold. So, I'm not going to do that one. I don't have access to... I think the basic jet is the aerospace jet, the uh, aircraft jet. In addition to spacecraft, I can also build aerpl uh, airplanes here. So, I also need to test the solid fuel booster orbiting Kerbin. I can't seem to get anybody up into orbit right now, so... It's probably not going to be much uh, something I can do. I can test uh, the Mark 16 parachute. I need to be in out between an altitude of 1,000 to 9,000 meters and uh, at a speed of 70 meters to 250 meters. This is relatively e seems relatively easy to do, if not uh, low threshold. So we'll look into that. I also need to test the Thumper solid fuel booster at the launch site. So basically, I just have to. Activate the part through start staging sequence right on the launch pad. So basically I uh, Get a thumper get some get a um, Command pod on top of it uh, put on a parachute and fire it off and I get this thing Okay, I don't get much money for it What's that? Uh, so I could also test the drogue shoot. I do need to be between an altitude of 1,000 to 5,000 meters and be traveling at a speed of 90 to 150 meters per second. So while I do believe I have three tests I could probably uh, complete relatively easily, I can only currently have an active max of two contracts available. Uh, however, if I leave the facility and right click it, I can also upgrade the facility, which gives extra uh, abilities. So, I already read this somewhere. But right now, I can only get a maximum of two active contracts. If I upgrade it for 75,000 currency, I can get seven contracts. And if I upgrade both mission control and the tracking station, I also get access to the ability for flight planning, which would allow me to uh, um, theoretically adjust the 
velocity of the path of the vehicles to obtain whatever flight path I wish to choose, uh, attain. The only problem is, is that the, that's no guarantee that the aircraft or spacecraft will actually have the fuel and the thrust capabilities to actually affect said change. But uh, it is easier to gauge where I want the thing to land uh, if I have access to flight planning. Of course, upgrading the tracking station uh, costs 150,000 coin. But it would give me patch conics visible in the map. Still not quite certain what patch conics are. And the maximum uh, DNS power of 50G, whatever that is. Although current max DNS power is 20. Aha. So, the real easy way to get coin, and technically the only way to get coin, I guess, is to complete contracts. So, let's take the parachute ones, because they seem relatively, well, similar. Okay, I could have sworn there's a way just to fast they automatically fast forward to daytime. I guess I don't have that just yet. Alright, so uh I just sped up the time and uh, we are now five days in the future. Well four days in the future. Still my time though. Oops. Plus, I, did we get more funding? I could have sworn that was 245,000. All right, so let's try this again. We are here, I believe. Yeah, Kerbal Space Center. Trying to get it to daytime. And I think that's daytime. Close enough for my purposes. And now it's light, so I guess we're good. Do I still have access to my jobs, though? Yes. In fact, uh, while the available uh, jobs have a smaller expiration time, oh, I can actually ferry, I actually now have jobs allow me to ferry tourists around. These two guys want suboitable space flight. I can technically do that. I just don't have a means of carrying them yet. Although, technically, I do if I use multiple command pods. Uh, but for right now, I want to... Of course, the tourists are actually rather lucrative jobs, I believe. Well, sort of. I mean... It's like 24,000, I guess. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this one. You have to haul a decoupler, a TD-25 decoupler into an escape trajectory out of carbon. Basically, I have to fling a rocket fast enough and far enough away that it escapes the gravity well of carbon. And I can't even get into orbit around carbon, let alone get past it. Anyway. Alright, so if I can manage to get around, like, say, 3,000 meters per second. Not 3,000 meters per second, that'll cause everything to explode. Uh, around 3,000 altitude at around uh, 100 meters a second. I should be able to hit both of these at the same time. So that's the target uh, point. So let's get to vehicle construction. I'm going to need one of these command pods. I am going to need Mark 16 parachute and radial drug mountage. So they are... Where is survivability? Where is not having people die? Here we are. Utility. Close enough.
wrong button. Over here. Shoot it there. And, uh, do there. Look at the doors right here, so I have to be careful not to put anything over the door. Alright, so this is going to be a simple rocket, so I just needed a coupler. Put that there. Then I'm going to need rockets. Where is... Rockets. Let's see if the hammer can get me where I need to go at the speed that I need to get there at. Because I like eight times radial symmetry, just because I think it's fun looking. Uh, put a whole bunch of fins right there, and hopefully it's slightly aerodynamic. Put the drogue shoots on a separate staging. Uh, double check to make certain we have the right guy aboard. And Jebediah is close enough. I don't see the need to save this. Wrong button, I guess. Alright, so let's just launch. Alright, so... Alright, let me re uh, review the controls. Left, right, up, down, roll left, roll right, that's the brakes, that's the camera, that's the cockpit, that's the throttle controls, but because this isn't a liquid-fueled engine, I don't need that. Uh, here we go, SAS on and technically RCS on, I don't really need RCS because there's no reaction control thrusters. Although there is the gyroscope built into the command pod, so who's that? why do this why doesn't do anything anyway off we go all right so I've exceeded the distance of the radio drogue shoots and I've lit the thing on fire. Okay then. That's always fun. So pop that off. I mean, I'm technically a bit high to use the radial drogue shoots right now. Something tells me I am going to be... I mean, where am I? Where is this? Thing? Posis is. I mean, we're going to be leaving atmosphere. Make no mistake about that. Always fun. Let's speed up time real quick. And back down we go. All right, so thumper bit more than what I needed to do. So the breeze is about 11 kilometers away and actually getting closer. Did it actually survive landing? I don't think so. I think it's still falling down. All right, so hopefully uh, we get within the range that I need to get into. If something tells me I probably won't. 
Well, we are slowing down. And now we are speeding back. No, we actually are slowing down, but not fast enough for the drogue shoots. Okay. And now we are slowing down fast enough for the drogue shoots, so... Deploy the shoots. And then deploy these. Of course, I misread that, and I had to be at 150 meters per second, so we got one, but not the other. So... You know, let's just revert flight. Alright, so we learned that this is too powerful. You go away. Uh, let's go with the flea again. Let's line this up nicely, thusly, and uh, we should be good. So let's try this one. I did not check stagings. I did not check stagings. So just add one here. Toss this here. SAS on. Yes, I will say that every time. And away we go. Okay, so one thing I'm thinking I'm probably doing wrong is actually using the solid fuel boosters. But, uh, jettison that. Now see, we're getting within the speed requirements for the radial shoots, but we're too high for the radial shoots. Now we're actually traveling too slowly. Alright, so we're now traveling back down, but we've again exceeded the speed limit, and since we're going down as opposed to up, we're not going to be slowing down. So, let's revert flight again. Alright, and so one thing I think I'm doing wrong is using solid fuel as opposed to liquid fuel. So we'll just get rid of this. Science is all about um, figuring out what you did wrong so that we can do better. And then I'm going to need a liquid fuel engine. Put the fins back on. Alright, let's try this one. So the difference between liquid fuel and solid fuel is that solid fuel is basically a, uh, a firecracker or firework for lack of a term. And again, I did not fix staging. So hang on. So basically, once you turn a uh, solid fuel rocket on, there's no stopping it. It just basically fires off until it runs out of gas. The difference is liquid fuel uh, is affected by throttle. So if I put it up to max throttle, it burns as hot as possible. If I put a zero throttle, it shuts off. If I slowly raise or lower the throttle, uh, I can set it at, to various degrees. So if I say set it to about, I think that's two thirds uh, maximum. It'll only use about two-thirds of the fuel and only produce about two-thirds worth of thrust. So it allows me better control into the as to the speed of the craft itself. So SAS on, throttle at maximum just to take off, and uh, away we go. See now if we bring it down. We've already exceeded the speed limit, so if we cut it off, we're now lower than that. But, uh, we've exceeded the speed limit again. And, uh, now we haven't. So if we just dump that and blow all the chutes, we've completed the objective. 
disable all the shoots. Just watch as the remaining gas tank and gas in the tank hits the landing pad and probably causes it all to go boom. As the parachutes open up, that's why you should never be standing next to the landing pad. Let's just increase the time warp. And why isn't the main chute open? Because the main chute defaults to opening at a kilometer above the surface. There we go. And uh, we slow down to a survivable fall. On the plus side, if I get rid of the nav warp, I don't believe I can see the crater that the uh, rocket made when it hit the ground traveling at a speed of I don't actually know and down we are on the ground we have succeeded we have completed our jobs we have made the money recover the vessel and because I'm literally within walking distance of the launch pad, I should be able to get full refund on the parts. Yep. Now I'm at uh, 300,000. And you gain no experience because it's the exact same thing Jebediah has done all the time. Alright, so I can also... There's more VIPs that want uh, tourists and... Basically, more tourists that want to fly in space. Suborbital means that I have to leave the atmosphere but not actually achieve orbit. So, basically, what I've been doing so far I just need to build a rocket capable of exceeding the, uh, well, leaving the atmosphere. So, basically, fleeing something over 70,000 meters from the surface and, uh, without actually getting it into orbit where it doesn't hit the ground again so these i can easily do the only problem is again i don't have anything that uh can ferry multiple people outside of multiple command pods i mean i believe yeah the crew cabin is what i usually use to carry extra people but in order to get this, I need 45 research, and I only have 30.4 research available. Uh -huh. But, uh... I'm guessing the Thumper mission's no longer around. I was hoping to do that one next, but I guess jumping five days into the future uh, rendered that gone. So I can always test the D-12 decoupler landed at Kerbin, which is basically... Build an aircraft and fire it off while it's still on the pad. So, we don't get much money, but I do get some money. Oh. Right, I could do this one where I have to be in flight above 18,400 meters, but I have to be someplace called Kerbin's Luck in order to do it. And until I get aircraft, uh, I don't really have a means of traveling long distances within a set number of meters. Although I just need to test the basic Juno engine at the launch site for here, so I can do this one too. Uh -huh. Alright, so for here... Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Where are... I just need structural components for this thing. Then I need... What do I need? The D12 decoupler. Which one's the D12? Ah, the D12 decoupler. Okay. Uh... Alright, set your sandwich between there. 
and engines where are yeah the basic Juno engine is experimental I wish you not put that on the bottom Guessing I can't put it on the side, so what I'm going to do is get rid of this modular frame. Stick on a gas tank. Put this here. Stick on two other gas tanks, just so that way the engines have something to latch on to. And, uh, that should be good. I don't actually plan on having this go anywhere. So... Should be a non-issue. So I don't think the engines will work without air tank. Hang on, I wonder. Um... Alright, I don't have aircraft parts yet, so I don't have any jet intake intakes yet. So basically launch this. Of course, I also forgot a parachute. So if this thing somehow manages to take off, uh, Jebediah is basically dead. In fact, I actually know has the parachutes from last time. But uh, Jebediah got to fly the last mission. So let's put in Valentina, my other pilot. What's the fault of Jebediah for some reason? Right, because he's at the top of the list. Anyway, so launch we go. Alright, and... You just the Juno engine and the decoupler at Kerbin. Both are on the initial facing, so... Ah. I have an extra decoupler there for some reason. But uh, if we just simply... Well, I have to be professional about this. SAS on. And, uh, first aid mission. Wait, those things actually work? Am I even burning fuel? Ah, that's why. Throttle wasn't on, but if I turn it on, no air intake, so it dies. So, there's that. And uh, I guess we're good, so recover the vessel. So even more contracts complete, and I think we actually got a couple uh, extra points of science for that. Alright, so... Let's do something crazy. Let us actually upgrade mission control for some money. Now I can have seven contracts, so what I'm going to do is since all of these VIPs, I believe, require suborbital flight. Yeah, everybody requires suborbital flight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accept all the VIP jobs. Drop this, drop this, drop this. Uh, get rid of this. Put in a fuel tank because I need it for the structure. Put in... How many VIPs do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, perfect. Put in six of these. I'm going to need these intact. <laughs> and then... Six more command pods. And... Six more parachutes. And... I'm at 23 parts and haven't even installed engines yet. Alright, so this is probably stupid, but uh, let's go with solid fuel boosters. By solid fuel boosters, I mean. Hang on. Here. 
uh, the thumper, which exceeds the weight by a ridiculously large amount. So. That also exceeds the weight by a ridiculously large amount. So we are not going to be able to call all six tourists up at once. So let's go with two. Yeah, let's change things around real quick. Uh, let's go with actually flea boosters. Thusly. Stick you there, thusly. And then we can. Where are. Structure. Coupling. Then we can stick on the couplers underneath the fleas and put in the thumpers. Not thumpers. What are these? And we exceed the weight limit. Hmm. I guess I don't need this one. To line up the wing exactly. Alright, so in terms of stagings, these rockets go first, then the decouplers kick them away. Actually, I probably don't need this decoupler. Uh, so then these decouplers kick them away, and then in case I need them, the solid fuels fire off. And I believe it's the drug chutes and then the standard parachutes. All right, so I mean Valentina didn't really do much last job, so I guess she's flying the extra tourists. So we'll see if this works. And I guess I'll take them up two at a time. All right, SAS on. I'd say throttle max, but everything's solid fueled, so it doesn't really matter. Here we go. I mean, everything seems to be fine. I'm not getting any anomalous pitch roll and yaw readings. So it looks like they're traveling in a straight line. I should not have looked at it that way. They're going up. I just realized all the wings are on the lower boosters. So if I look at it, where it, where are they? Right, a postus isn't even high enough. So there's some those and fire off the fleas. Alright, so it'll get where I need them to go by a ridiculously large amount. It also pretty much lit everything on fire. Guess I don't need wings this high up. Well, getting back down is what the parachutes are for. Just speed up time, so that way, I mean, we're just basically watching them fly upwards and then back down. And they've gotten to suborbital flight. I just need to make certain that, oh, it's the two tourist package. Now I just need to make certain that uh, they don't die. And back down we go. Of course, now the problem becomes, how are they going to stop? Because they just flipped over and they're dead. All right. Uh, let us revert back to the vehicle assembly. I would say I need more drogue shoots, but drogue shoots really won't help in this scenario, uh, given the fact that they were traveling ridiculously too fast and uh, then they flipped over. So where am 
my heat shields. Alright, so I didn't need the hammers because I think the fleas ended up doing more than I think the flea, three fleas ended up do, getting uh, the ship farther than the two hammers did. Let's get the hammers in a different facing. As well as the couplers. Look at the drogue shoots. The oh, drogue shoots are right there. So stick the drogue shoots in their own facing. In fact, Alright, so now if it flips upside down, the heat shield should uh, help dissipate heat and make the aircraft, aircraft, the uh, flying bomb slightly less aerodynamic, so that way it hopefully slows down faster. Did I put people in this thing? I don't remember. Apparently it stayed the way that they were, so I still have these two. Okay, good. SAS on, fire it off. Alright, they're done, so get us some those. And fire off the others. Alright, I guess I did need the hammer, so they didn't get all that far. Alright, revert flight. Yeah, it's too heavy with three. Well, let's try two hammers and a flea, see how that gets me. Progress is trial and error. The game is a trial. Everything I do wrong is an error. SAS on. Away we go. So the flea gave out a while ago. Dumpers are still going strong. And now they're gone. So just jettison all of those. And a POSIS is... Uh, less than I did. So we'll fire off the fleas again. Alright, so for some reason that didn't work like it did the last time. I guess the uh, heat shields making everything less aerodynamic works both up as well as down. How am I going to do this? Well, I could get rid of the heat shields, yes, but I would like to point out Get rid of the heat shields, it's going to just flip upside down again and uh, crash into the ground. Okay. 
could try this one. I mean, just basically chain command pods and be uh, one after another. Put on a thumper. And, uh... Because this thing is definitely going to fall over as soon as I launch this. Uh, wings! Lots and lots of wings. In fact... Coupling. Once I run out of solid fuel, they're all just going to... Well... Yeah. Also, utility. Add in a couple, do not need eight drug shoots. And alternate between drug and radial shoots. All right, so. First things first, put the thumper on the bottom. That the couples, then the flea, then that the couples. Then we have all the way back down, drug shoot, drug shoot, drug shoot, and uh, drug shoots, and then regular shoots. So hopefully, I can not only just take everybody. basically one trip one uh, and I take all the tourists but uh, hopefully they manage to survive landing let's try this one too many parts unable to launch okay how many parts do I need to cut five okay Three these that's two that's four that's six Hopefully it'll be enough parachutes. If not, well, I'll be back here. Launch! Hopefully it doesn't fall over. On the plus side, it didn't fall over. SAS on and, uh, fire! Now the Thumper is the biggest solid fuel rocket I have, as far as I know, so... I mean, we're only two kilometers above the surface and half the fuel is already gone. And we're starting to roll slightly, I think. Although we are getting pretty fast. Not as fast as I would have liked, though. What is a POSIS? POSIS is 12,000 and change. So jettison that, fire the fleet. Not even close again. Okay. I don't want to get out. Alright, so this did not work either. Alright, so one thing I can do is upgrade the launch, the launch pad, which gets me a max, because it seems my issue seems to be maximum weight with the thumpers. Uh, I can now, rather than having a maximum mass of 18 tons, have a maximum mass of 140 tons. Although I'm still limited to 30 parts, so... If I were to say, cut back on the wings, I'm still gonna have wings, just only four of them, instead of eight. I can then... Stick on two more thumpers. Oh, 
Hopefully this doesn't fall over. Because I don't think I can afford to uh, upgrade the VAB as well. Alright, SAS on and away we go. So now we should have three times the amount of thrust, so we should travel three times as fast and hopefully get three times as high. Hopefully. I mean, I am seeing white air resistance, so that's always a good sign. Problem will be once it starts turning red. I'm getting failure warnings on the parachutes. And it starts turning red just as the solid fuels run out of uh, thumpers run out of gas. So let's jettison those and check how high we're going to get. And not high enough. So fire off the flea. And we will actually get into orbit, hopefully. Get us in the flea. Not orbit. We'll get into. We'll exceed the atmosphere, which is what I need for suborbital flight. Although we are currently still in atmo, so air resistance is causing the opposes to drop, but not all that quickly. So I'm already at 52, 54,000 meters, 55 kilometers. Let's just go kilometers at this point. And uh, post this is still 72,630. Yeah, we should be able to make that. Air resistance isn't all that high up here. Yeah, we'll make it. Tourists will touch the sky, and they've done so. Alright, so we hit a postus, and now we're on our way back down. Yep, everybody got a suborbital flight. They gotta be in space. Now, the only issue is getting back down, and, uh... Fortunately, the bottom of all command pods have uh, heat-resistant coating on the very bottom. So if they maintain this, well, orientation, uh, they should be fine. And if they do somehow manage to flip back upside down, uh, the heat shield on top should protect them that way. The only issue is, will they be able to slow down fast enough and high enough that the four drogue chutes that I still have on the uh, massive tower of command pods uh, slow it down enough so that way the main chutes can slow everything down enough to, well, not kill anybody. That is going to be the problem. And I'll find out in about 10 kilometers, 18 kilometers. I think atmosphere starts getting thick enough to actually slow everything down at 40 clicks uh, ASO. We're not 30 clicks and we're still accelerating. Now we're at 20 clicks. This is the worrisome part. And now it starts trying to flip around. We're five kilometers above, but that's enough for the drogues. The drogues deploy. Slow everything down. That way, the main shoots deploy, and everybody gets to live to tell their grandkids that they went to space. Hopefully, we're still actually trying. Uh, again, I keep forgetting default altitude for the main shoots to open is one kilometer. So 35.7. If they were smacking to the ground at this speed, they would probably blow up the uh, command pods. Or Two get one to two guys on the bottom would do, uh, certainly die, but the chutes weren't fully open at the time. Now they are, and uh, it's everything is now survivable. 
We're also within, I guess, a decent ATV drive away from, uh... What was that? I was probably the rocket. Uh, away from the Kerbal Space Center, so we're relatively close, so... Nature hike afterwards. Always fun. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it hit ground, uh, the command pods fell over because they were top heavy, and uh, the heat shield exploded. But uh, I don't need to keep the heat shield in order to keep everybody alive, so. I'm going to consider that a success. Recover the vessel. And if it had landed upright, I would have wondered how exactly the, the uh, guys on top are going to get out, but that would have been an issue for the recovery teams. So, there's that. All right, and all the tourists gained one XP, but uh, I don't really care about them because they now go away. And uh, we made... Actually, I think we made a profit, sort of. Certainly after upgrading the... We now have more money than we did after upgrading mission control. Uh -huh. Alright, so it's... Focused atmospheric survey. Again. And ferry one, two, three, four, five tourists. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And also test the Terrier liquid fuel engine. Alright, so let's... Let's see, this is suborbital. So mm -hmm. suborbital. Mm -hmm. More suborbitals. This is the liquid fuel. Alright, so more sub tourists want to go suborbital, so let's get these guys. And uh, we'll also get the liquid fuel engine. You know, just so that way we have this available. Test the. Uh, we're not going to be testing the parachute. I don't think, on uh, this trip, but I'll have it just to have it for next time. Alright, so we need to test, so for this batch's emissions, I need to test the Terrier liquid fuel engine on Kerbin, and I have three parts to play with, so let us get radial coupling, a radial coupling, on the central thumper. And on that said thumper, uh, where is Terrier liquid fuel engine? Stick that there. That's not where I wanted it to go. Alright. Um, that on the decoupler, empty out the liquid fuel because I won't actually need it, and where did I put that engine? Oh, there we are. Not something you ever want to hear at a uh, space testing facility. Alright, and I have... Five. Yeah, so I have five turrets this trip, so... Turrets. Turrets this trip. So, I don't... Come on. Alright, wrong setting. So, I don't need this command pod. And, uh, we'll stick Jebedi in the pilot seat this time. Alright, so I know that this uh, basic design works now. So, I can just take this, minus one extra command pod, for these VIPs. We're also going to be testing a Terrier engine at the launch pad, so all I need to do is activate it. So, the plan is 
to test the Terrier engine on the pad, jettison it, so that way it doesn't affect the aerodynamics of everything else, and then basically do what I just did. And if I can test the drogue, sh the standard shoot between, I don't think I'm actually going to get that slow, that high with this. But if we manage to do so, and I'm paying attention, we can also test the parachute. Let us launch. You know, let's revert flight for a quick second. One thing I just realized, I can actually change the maximum opening of all the parachutes, and that includes the drogue chutes, so part of me wonders... Okay, so minimum altitude exceeds... Part of me wondered if I can actually deploy the drogue chutes high enough that they can actually slow the uh, this monstrosity down within the altitude range to affect uh, so that way I can get the standard parachute test complete. But the maximum alti opening altitude of the drogue chutes is 5,000. In fact, the maximum altitude for all parachutes seems to be 5,000. Okay. Which is lower than the minimum altitude I need to test the first parachute. So, there's that. Alright, let's get back to launching. Alright, so, SIS on. Throttle will still be to zero, and plus, I don't think this fuel tank has anything. So, even if I were to, say, put throttle to maximum, fire off this engine first, uh, any thrust shouldn't topple this over because it's got no gas. So, there's that. We're good there. Get rid of it. Oh look, it's just lying there. Interesting. And fire off everything else. Now since I'm also one command pod short, it should actually be less weight. So the thrusters should be able to thrusters. The engines should be able to produce faster speeds and Okay, I am seeing it start to yaw back and forth. So, it should actually technically get higher. Yeah, it actually got to 60 and change. Jettison those, and fire off the flea for the last bit. Yeah, and they should actually get uh, about 80, 80 kilometers this time. So it's just... That was the parachutes, wasn't it? What happened to the decoupler? I didn't put a decoupler on. Hang on. Don't want to deploy the chutes going up, so... Uh, coupling. Because the coupler that uh, I had was on the command pod that I got rid of. So there's that. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, SAS on as usual. Throttle doesn't really matter. Fire off the Terrier. Job's complete. Jettison Terrier. At least we didn't hit whatever bunker was lying around beforehand, and it actually looks slightly modernized. Not slightly, it does look modernized. Fire off everything else. Well, the thump. Because we have tourists to impress. I mean, at least one of them looks happy. I'd mention their name and who they are, but uh, truth be told, since they're temporary, I don't actually care who they are.
Yeah, so no, it's not something you want to hear from uh, the hospitality industry, but you know, this is space exploration, not hospitality. All right, dumpers are out, so we just send those and fire off the fleet. All right, and the flea is out, so the postus is actually higher than last, well, than the sixth tourist uh, journey, so they're actually getting a better trip. Jettison that, because I don't need it anymore. And uh, now we watch everything. Space, so majestic. They're not even in space here. Who am I trying to kid? Anyway, up we go. And now they're in space. And now they're heading back down from space. Well, I'd make the uh, journeys more in-depth, but I don't have the parts and capabilities of carrying multiple people, multiple places. I mean, I'm only doing this because I have no other alternative. Once I get passenger cabins, better engines, and all that fun stuff, as we hit re-entry, uh, I'll consider doing more in-depth things. But I need signs for that, and I'm not technically actually doing any signs. Again, flip sideways. This is normal. I tell everybody who's panicking, and everybody seems fine. So the rope switch deploy, and they fully open. Everybody gets whiplash. And then the main switch deploy. And uh, it becomes survivable again. Everybody's fine, and uh, they enjoy a leisurely fall from three kilometers ASL. Basically, three and two and a half kilometers AGL as something explodes. I don't think that was a thumper, so I would think that they would have dropped farther by now. I mean, that's probably th that's the flea and all the wings. That's the uh, Terrier engine that I have sitting on the pad. I'm going to have to go and clean that up. As always, I think they're about to hit the ground, but then I realize that they're still over half a kilometer above the surface. Alright, and uh, down they go. And the parachutes were actually able to remain stable enough to lower it gently. And while I think the door is facing the ground, everybody, including the heat shield, managed to survive. So, cover the vessel. We're now at 33.7 signs, so that's always cool. And I guess the tourists give slight amounts of science, so I guess in theory, if I keep doing VAP missions, I should be able to get enough science to get one of the next tier. So, always fun. Alright, so, I have... Four more tourists who want to do suborbital flights. And uh, another test of the hammer on the launch pad. Some more tests of the couplers on escape velocity. So let's pick up more tourists because apparently uh, space tourism is now our thing. 
eventually, if it keeps going on the way it did the last time, search and rescue will eventually be our thing, but uh, we're going to have to be able to actually get into orbit first, which uh, I haven't been able to do yet. On the plus side, I believe I have enough of a comfortable amount that I can upgrade the vehicle assembly building. And I can now build spacecraft consisting of... 255 parts so I can definitely build quite a few more things now in fact get rid of you and you in fact let's just get rid of everything and start from scratch again so one command pod and how many turrets do I have this time one, two, three, four tourists. Go to Jebediah because he went last mission. Valentina's up next. So now that I can have more complex vehicles, let us. How do I want to do this? I want to do this with fuel tanks and liquid thrusters. So. Come on, there we are. And Rowland does give better thrust, so we'll stick those on. Put on another command pod here. Put on heat shields. Add parachutes. Say that looked off, but I don't think it is. Uh, where is aerodynamics? Put on wings. Dustly. So one thing they like doing when I have to deal with uh, building large things laterally and using multiple mirrorings is I build one of whatever I eventually try plan on mirroring and uh, once that one thing is done I detach it from the main body uh, up um, increase the symmetry mirror and then put in however many I want so I want the couplers here and here then I want thumpers here and here Then I want mortar couplers. Thusly. And I have to test the hammer, right? Yeah, the hammer. And I want hammers underneath these. Then we go, because I have four turrets, four times symmetry. I don't have the couplers underneath here, just simply because... Actually, you know what? Let's go with... we have got radial shoots, too. Well, drogue shoots. That would have been bad. Of course, that's the cabin, so... That's sideways. So I can slap a drogue shoot. Also, if I wanted to mess with face each. You know, hang on. Another thing it allows me to do is mess with the facing slightly on the uh, side part, not facing, the uh, symmetry on the side part. So I can actually put two drogue shoots on this thing, and then put four of them. And that ends up getting me eight drogue shoots uh, lined like that. And I have five regular shoots. And a whole bunch of stuff. So, what I need to do is the hammers go here. I'm sure the facings are actually fine. So, the hammers fire off to complete the uh, one contract. Then, 
they did a couple once they run out of gas or they just don't simply lift this massive thing off and then the thumpers take over and that should get them wherever they need to go and uh, once they run out of gas I jettison those and then I have I'm going to need to fix the basics I know the liquid fuel ones for extra funness then drogue shoots because if I'd a couple these things they're going if I'd a couple the fuel tanks and the engines all the command pods are just gonna fly wherever so this is now the main ship but uh, then after that the drogue shoots deploy and then the regular parachutes so let's get all the turrets into their nice comfy pods of death It only considers that there's one pod. Should be like eight of four, five of them. There we go. Alright, so I can't remember if Valentina took the last drop or not. I think she did, so let's put Jebediah back in. But, uh... that now and then let's uh, once again put all the tourists into their nice comfy pods of doom all right so this should be good if it works And it's not falling over on the launch pad, so I consider that stage one success. SAS on. Fire off the hammer, the hammers. And they are actually causing issues with the pitch. On the plus side, the hammers uh, fired off, and we are actually flying upwards. Fun stuff. Well, if the SAS wasn't on, then these pitch issues would translate into this thing rocking back and forth, and I have to control manually. Now the hammers are gone. Get rid of those. And fire off the, uh, the uh, thumpers. As the thrust from the thumpers, I think, actually blew up the hammers. The nav ball was in the way, so I didn't actually get to see. But I'm going to assume that's what happened. And yet still stuff hit the ground. Alright, and now we're getting excessive amounts of pitch, so the ship is actually starting to tilt. And a POSIS is not going to be enough, so we get us in these, kick throttle to maximum, and fire off the liquid fuels. Alright, so we kill the liquid fuels because Oposis is now over 100,000. And in fact, if we angle this slightly and give it some more thrust, aim it slightly for the horizon, and then kill thrust, Oposis is still ridiculously high, but uh, then they end up in the water. Always fun. All right, and they've achieved suborbital velo uh, leveling. And now that I'm not using solid fuels the entire time, can actually flip this around and do some fun things with my remaining gas. Like mostly, start a breaking burn. Even though I'm still technically going up. 
So now they still land in the water, but they're not as far away, although they keep going higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target retrograde and then fire off the rest of the gas. So now a post is 120,000 kilometers. 124,000 and change, technically. And uh, they land closer to the Kerbal Space Center than they would have. And since I again need to keep all this uh, together, uh, I can't decouple these things. Hmm. That's that one job I needed for the parachute. 6,000 to 9,000 meters. Definitely not going to do it with this. If I'm testing a parachute this low and this slow, I can't have anything go on this high. But Oposis has, well, been met, and now they're going to start falling down again. And now they're back in atmosphere. So what I should probably do is aim for retrograde but uh, the thrusters don't have any heat shielding and it's going to flip around anyway so let's point it prograde and let the forward heat shields deal with everything yeah everybody seems happy They say ignorance is bliss. I guess this is evidence of that. As they turn into a fireball 23 clicks above uh, the water. But because of the forward heat shields, everything is fine and they slow down. Hopefully enough, the drogue shoots to kick in and everybody experiences whiplash as it flips around because I got no control at that point. Drogue chutes open, slowing everything down to almost survivable. And uh, then the main chutes deploy, which turns everything into survivable once they open because I didn't adjust the altitude for the opening of the chutes. So at one kilometer, they will open and everything will be fine. If a little bit waterlogged. Yep, shoots open and uh, not traveling at uh, 9.2 meters because usually it's just the command pods, but they got all this extra stuff tied with it. But uh, it's just thrusters and empty fuel tanks and uh, wings, all of which I don't really care about if it explodes. Which it all does. I think the wings snap off. But everybody's alive, and uh... take a crew report. Get extra two uh, points of science. All right, so let's recover that vessel. This version's a little bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing. At least to me, as opposed to the massive tower command pods. Oh, well, we get all that science. Still not enough to actually get anything new, but baby steps, as they say. Alright, any more VIPs? No. Okay. Except now I have to test... Solid fuel boosters orbiting Kerbin. Uh, heat shields over curb, flight over Kerbin. Pop on the escape trajectory still. And then I need to test the radial mount parachute uh, in flight over Kerbin. What's the current? 6,000 to 9,000. 
150 to 240. This one is 1,000 to 7,000 going at 70 to 200. So if I can get within 150 to 200 meters per second, traveling at around 6,000 meters or 6,500 6, meters, I could technically get both of these uh, jobs complete all at once. I can also test this engine, 3,000 to 900, uh, 9,000 meters uh, above the surface, traveling at 60 to 240. I'd say why not, but I don't actually have... The only way I'm getting the engine strapped to any sort of thing that looks like a rocket is if I strap them to the side. And if I do that, it'll make it less aerodynamic. So I'm not going to do this one. Mm -hmm. All right. And these atmospheric readings and temperature surveys require an airplane, which I just don't have access to yet. So I'm just going to test the chutes. So this whole massive monstrosity of craziness can go bye-bye as I rip the heads off and uh, get rid of the rest. So there's that. Alright, so right now I need two fuel tanks, a Reliant liquid fuel engine, and I need radial mount chutes and the standard chute. So actually, a couple all of this. Utility. Two radial chutes and a standard parachute. I'm not going all that high, so I don't think I need drug chutes and um, the heat shield. Pop on eight wings just because I think it's cool looking. And, uh, you know what? Just for the initial getting off the ground, throwing a hammer. Yeah, that should be good. So the hammer should be able to get me up where I need to go. The liquid fuel engine will allow me to better control the speed and height that the vessel is at when I deploy the parachutes. Part of me actually wants to couple the liquid fuel gas tanks after the chutes fire just for better control. So that is actually what I'm going to do. So stick you there. Probably didn't need the extra facing, so staging. So get rid of that and put you there. And Jebediah is back in the hot seat. I think it was Valentine. I don't remember which one went that last. Of course, I said that the last time, and I think I switched back to Jebediah for that. Yeah, Jebediah's the default. Go Valentina this time. So I need to be between. Target range is between 6,000 uh, 6, meters to 7,000 meters and traveling at around 150 to 200 meters per second. All right, SAS on and fire. Also, kick up the throttle just for fun. And uh, we are not aerodynamic enough. Huh. All right, let's revert to flight. And since I have the greater threshold of parts now, because I upgraded some things. Eight more wings on the hammer. Let's try this now. I was going to say, whatever happened to that thumper debris from like three missions ago? 
know if it's in orbit the breeze stays put. One of the problems I had. Anyway, SAS on and fire! Yeah, this thing's a lot more stable now. So jettison that, and I need to be, well now I'm over what I need to be, definitely over what I need to be. Kick up the throttle, well let's not kick up the throttle, but I will activate the stage. Fire it off. Okay, just for a test. Because I'm way higher than what I needed to be. And it needs to be... 150 to 200. At 7,000 to 6,000 meters. Okay, breaking burn works. Okay, so I'm within the altitude threshold. Now I'm speed, so we fire off the chutes and we're good. Hopefully. Just in the rest of that, so that way the chutes aren't hauling down uh, gas tanks. And uh, we just bombed the we just bombed the Kerbal Space Center again. Chutes open, and we're good. All right, and we're down, so... Valentina survived, we completed the jobs, covered the vessel. She got parts. No XP gained, but again, they won't gain any experience into orbit. And we're now at 43.7 signs, so less than two more points and I can get more parts. Of course, the question is, what parts should they be? I mean, I could go with aviation, which would allow me to basically build planes, which I could then use for temperature surveys and all the other survey jobs. I can also get better flight controls, which get me better winglets, as well as reaction uh, wheel and apparently re-entry module. And get basic science, which gets me a uh, basic automated um, AI control device, as well as batteries and more science equipment, as well as radiators apparently, and antenna. I can get with, go with general construction, which gets me my passenger cabins that I want, uh, as well as a structural fuel silage and uh, various extra things like uh, bigger decouplers, I think, as well as structural connectors because larger uh, space vessels do what I sometimes like to do, what I like to call octopusing. Which basically means I make them with like lateral engines and they start flying all about independently. And we have advanced rocketry which gets us extra engines and other fun things. Oh, they must have moved that. I didn't realize the fuel tank adapters uh, were this low. Given the fact that the next fuel tank up is a T400 which is the same size and shape as the T's 200 and 100 just twice as tall. Whereas the adapter uh, allows me to connect larger and smaller tanks. Of course, I also get the T2, the uh, TX220, which I'm assuming is the larger tank in question. And these two are new for this stage. So, 
whole bunch of fun things I can look forward to if and when I get the science to actually do all, all of that. But uh, that's all going to be another issue for another day, because I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um, have a good day.